Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the No Easy Way Out podcast. My name is Tony Nash and we are coming to you as always from the Armory here in beautiful downtown Owasso, Michigan. This is our quarantine edition podcast. We've been doing these every day and I'm really excited about my guest today. Someone that I kind of grew up with, used to play a little ball with on the uh, on the streets of O-Town and the streets of Corona. The one and only Jim Woodworth. Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate you having me. Now, Jim might look familiar to you because he looks a lot like his brother, Randy Woodworth, who we had on the show a couple of times. Uh, but Jim is not Randy. I'm not Randy. And not only am I not as not Randy, sometimes I get confused for not his brother, but yeah. his son. Oh, really? Yeah, you look happened. a lot younger than him. It's happened a few times. But he's taller than Randy, and he's better at basketball than Randy, in my experience. So, But Randy, uh, uh, Randy I, just, I just said it. Jim, <laughs> we're excited to have you on the show. And uh, thank you for being here today. So why don't you tell our audience a little bit about who you are and, and what you do for a living? Sure. Um, so I've been in the mortgage industry for about 15 years. Um, about a year and a half ago, I partnered with Brent Mowinski, who owns Mowinski Financial here downtown Owasso. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's a financial planner. He does insurance. He does securities. He does investing. He does a lot of different things. Uh, one thing he didn't do was mortgages. So I joined forces with him and uh, lead his mortgage operations now. Um, So helping people with purchasing, refinancing homes, debt consolidation, that kind of stuff through Mm -hmm. just home financing. And then also now uh, recently um, started a company called Success Group uh, Servicing where we do, um, we specialize in land contract servicing. So kind of use that as an exit strategy for long time uh, landlords who've been in the business a long time, have accumulated dozens or even hundreds of rental properties. And now we start um, converting those to land contracts and service those to give them an exit strategy as they leave the market and retire and kind of take it easy. Very cool. Very cool. I'd like to learn more about that. Um, Now, Jim is actually helping me and my wife get a mortgage as well as Zach here, our buddy. It's his 21st birthday here in the office and he's actually going to look at a duplex today. Jim's helping him get a mortgage for that. So you've been very helpful to us. I know you said you have 15 years in the mortgage industry. Tell us a little about your background. So I started out at one of the nation's largest lenders, a retail lender. I was there for about 14 years and um, for the majority of that time, I just did loan origination, just like I'm doing now for you and, and for Zach and, and many others. Um, but towards the end of my career there, I, I got into, uh, I held some different leadership positions where I led groups of mortgage bankers or loan originators. Um, and it was really a, a, a great experience to lead people and share my experience and show them what I learned. Um, but with me moving back to Owasso and just having a really um, just passionate about being downtown and do, um, helping develop some of the properties downtown Owasso. That particular job just became too much, uh, much of a demand, and it interfered with what I'm really passionate uh, right. about, which is downtown Owasso. Yeah, well, um, we're glad to have you back. Yeah, and when I left that job, my plan was to just be done with mortgages forever. Yeah. And Brent, who I've, he's, he's an amazing guy and um, does really, really well for his clients. I've known him since I was five years old. He pr- approached <laughs> me with the idea of, hey, help me do this. And it's just been a really, really good fit with Brent. Yeah, um, and he just got a new a new building. and Yeah, yeah he's in West Town now. West I mean, Town. Invested a ton of his own money into that project. Yeah. Um, and it's the West old, Town's really coming along, too. It with, sure is. Of him. And yeah. you got Corey and Josh next door yep. who have just completely transformed that building. Yeah, West Town um, Strong, man. It's the new. It's coming back. Yeah, sure. I remember when that was Neighborhood Video. I don't know if you remember. This oh, yeah. was way back. I, but. I remember that. That was back in yeah. the day when they had the swinging uh, doors. Yeah. You could be 18 to enter that particular <laughs> yes. section. Yes. Yes, I, I think I remember that. I don't, I don't know. I don't <laughs> My mom know. used to work at a video store, so yeah. I remember those days very well. Yeah, the video store is a thing of the past, I guess. So, um, so was the mortgage industry deemed essential by the government when this whole COVID-19 thing happened? It, it, it was, and it still is. Um, obviously, you have people that need those services. They're moving. Um, financial services is a huge piece of the um, industry that hasn't been affected as far as deemed essential or not but it has it has impacted the business pretty significantly in a lot of different ways yeah so why don't you talk about that well tell us about the the kind of impact that it's had on the mortgage industry sure well from your perspective yeah i mean about a month and a half ago you might remember the stock market just took a tank yeah and there was a huge liquidity process uh, or problem with a lot of lenders because their money's tied up it's dried up um so really the only impact is is qualifying has become a lot tougher yeah so if you were out um, looking at homes a month and a half ago, regardless of whether you've been impacted, if you're still working, you've still got money in the bank, um, it quite possibly has impacted what you can get as far right. as loan products. Which we've experienced personally. For sure, yeah. for sure. And we've, I mean, 
speaking of Corey, we had a couple clients in process where it, it was day by day. We were not sure if we were going to be able to deliver on mm -hmm. them getting their home, not because their situation changed. They're still working. Um, but lenders took a really, and they still had, they're still taking yeah. a very conservative stance yeah. on what loan products they will do and what they won't do. Right. And luckily everything worked out for, for the clients that I was working um, with Corey, but a lot of people haven't. I mean, it, literally from one day to the next, they, changes. Yeah. They can't do it. Yeah. yeah. And think about the emotional impact that it has with people because, I mean, you find a house you love. Yeah. You start telling your family. You post a picture on Facebook. There's that huge emotional attachment where it's not like buying anything else. No, it's a you huge I mean? decision. Your kids have looked at the house. It's it, and then to say sorry, we can't do it. Right. Um, yeah. So that has impacted a lot of people in that way. But the business is still going. Um, lenders have made a lot of adjustments in regards to loosening up uh, appraisal guidelines so appraisers aren't going into the home as much. Uh, title companies are being very flexible with how they close loans, whether it's um, six feet away or right. dropping packages off of doors. Uh, but it has impacted people that, uh, especially first-time homebuyers, that market has been impacted a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I you know, I certainly have experienced it in our personal lives as we're doing this. And and it is such a huge decision. And um, when you consider everything that goes into that, and now I think you're probably experiencing uh, people that are like, is this even the right time for yeah. me to take out a mortgage? You know, I've had that thought like, you know, should I just stick in the situation I'm in for a little bit longer and see how this thing plays out? So I'm sure that the the um, consumer confidence has, has lowered quite a bit. And I'm sure we're going to continue to see the results of that. What are you hearing from your colleagues and, and from your co-workers and the people you work around, uh, the kind of impact that it's had on them and their businesses and, and them personally? Well, I mean, co-workers and colleagues, the fact that we can still work, I mean, that's such a... Such a it, blessing right yeah, now. It's yeah, it's such a blessing. Um, I think there are probably days where they might think like, man, I wish I could just... Get a little break. Not work. Like, <laughs> yeah. do we really have to do this? Yeah. Um, but it, I mean, it's a blessing because a lot of people are just, you know, they're financial pictures changed dramatically for the worse um, because of, you know, whether they're getting an employment or whether they're waiting to get an employment. So that's a really good thing. Um, and from our standpoint, I mean, it, it really is as business as usual. I think the biggest shift we have had to deal with is we're not meeting with clients as much face to face. Right. Um, it's forced us to adapt to zoom and do some different things to where we're meeting with clients differently. Um, but especially with, you know, for me, um, the biggest thing that's impacted me and, and what we do from the mortgage side is there aren't as many people looking at homes. You can't, yeah. you know, people couldn't list homes for a long time. It's impacted sellers way more than buyers. Yeah. If you're looking to buy, I don't think the mindset has shifted to, at least overwhelmingly, it has not shifted to I'm nervous about buying. It's when can I get out and buy? Yeah. Um, if they were unhappy with their living situation before, right. that's only intensified. Sure. It's their bedrooms are small. They yeah. now they realize that more <laughs> than ever. As they've been trapped because in the house. Because they've been yeah. trapped in the house. So I think from a buyer standpoint, there are. I think it'll help that. Um, but the, from a seller standpoint, if you've if you've needed to move, but for the last month and a half you haven't been able to have people in your in your home, and realtors haven't been able to market that home like they used to, I think it has a much bigger impact on sellers, um, and they might need that money. Yeah. For yeah. buyers. You know, they're chomping at the bits. They want to get out and they want to buy. So I think once this thing changes, you will see, you know, you will see an influx. A growth, in my yeah. Opinion. yeah. Real yeah. quick. It'll happen real quick. Well, good. That's encouraging to hear. And uh, we are hoping for that day. And obviously there's so much uncertainty with when that will be or how that will work. I want to ask you, though, how has this impacted you and your family? Not just your immediate family, but your family as a whole, obviously being able to see people and not see yeah. people. And what kind of impact has it had on you guys? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously it's tough. It's it's easy and it's tough. I mean, it makes decisions easy. We can't, you know, Easter, for example, you know, usually yeah. it's a stressful, <laughs> we're going to Jill's mom's, we're yeah. going to my mom's, we're yeah. going to my dad's and we're yeah. doing all this, th you know, so that part of that decision process is easy. We're not doing anything. We're right. going to figure out, you know, we went to rivals and did their carry out. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's easy and it's tough. It's tough because we have family that really need, I mean, that's, they don't have the ability to go work. They're retired or, yeah. You know, they need that social interaction a lot more than we do. Um, and because Jill and I are both working, although she works from home, she's meeting with professors, she's meeting with students on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. that social in interaction for us is, it's still there. We can do it. But I think for our family, it's it's been, it's, 
you know, I, we don't have kids, but yeah. <laughs> Randy does, and my mom, yeah. and, you know, they miss the grandkids. Oh, I'm sure. So they're starting to see them a little more. I think that, you know, as this has gone on, we've, you know, we've, you know, we're doing what we feel is safe, safe and how yeah. we can safely adjust. And yeah. as far as, you know, I, I went to my mom's for Mother's Day. We yep. went to their so church service and yep. watched it with them on yeah. the computer. Yeah. And I dressed up for the first time in a month and a half. This is my second time. You look sharp, yeah, man. Thank you. you look sharp. Me thank and mom you. got to dress up. I appreciate yep, it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> You're on a very high level. I see that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really, I mean, it's just tough. It's well, people I, are ready to get back. I think you're seeing more and more people get confident to kind of safely go out as their comfort levels are, are, um, you know, increasing and understanding. I think we're all starting to hopefully get a little bit better understanding of what the virus is and how it works. Although I don't think anybody really knows exactly how it works and so we're just trying our best to listen to the professionals and do what we think is safe but i think what we're seeing here locally is you're seeing a lot more people just out i mean if you walk down the street right now you see cars everywhere and people are getting more and more confident so hopefully that will result in some good things and um so as far as mowinski financial you guys are open Mm -hmm. um and so you don't necessarily have plans for reopening. You guys are able to do that. So if, if you're listening and you need a mortgage, you can reach out to Mowinski Financial or to Jim personally if you have his number and uh, get a hold of them. And um, I, I guess I would like to finish the episode by asking, what would be some uh, piece of advice or something encouraging you would say to other people in your industry of what they could be doing or expecting to be doing right now? Maybe there are some that are not open and they're just yeah. kind of waiting. What would you say to them? Well, I think you've, you've really got to adapt to the work from home um, because there, whether you work for a company, you work for yourself and like interacting with people, um, you know, virtually, because that's not going to go away. I don't think anytime soon. Right. And for some people, they may prefer that going forward. Like, Hey, I don't have to drive somewhere. I can do right. everything. I've, you know, it's much more productive Yeah. when you can do everything. But I think regardless of whether in the mortgage industry or retail or, or whatever, you have to adapt to what's going to happen the circumstances. Next. Yeah. Um, there's a, I mean, there's a couple businesses downtown that I think have done a really good job adapting. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Aviator Jane, Myrtles, like regardless of what is thrown at them, they will react and they'll find out solutions. But uh, yeah. Aviator, Aviator Jane has shifted their focus from like not waiting for people to come in and buy candles or knickknacks or whatever, yeah. but they're going out and doing different things, furniture and, yeah. and setting gift baskets. Yep. Like you can't they're rely on people to come to doing you. Doing more e-commerce. E-commerce. Yeah. That's going to be a big thing, especially downtown. Like you can't rely on our 15,000 people to go support your business because right. if half of them don't feel comfortable getting out. Like right. you have to figure right. out different ways to, to market to them and, um, you know, foster doing the, co- you know, the to go coffees now, the yep. gallons or whatever. It's, yep. There's just so many different ways where you can adapt and, and get better at what you do. Well, we've seen that here. We, you know, we represent, you know, well over 50 businesses in Shiawassee County as far as, uh, for branding and marketing. And we've seen a lot of, of that, the people that have adapted and have really gotten creative, are doing okay and some of them in some cases are actually doing a little better yeah, they're, they're they definitely. found some creative solutions uh, and then there's some that have just kind of been unsure of what they should do and i would just encourage anybody watching that you know um find some creative ways to get your stuff your products out there e-commerce is a big opportunity right now as as online shopping is up like eight thousand yeah. percent something like i just read i mean it's just insane and people are shopping online so if you have great products or services, get them out there, get them online. We can help with that, of course. So anyways, well, Jim, I appreciate you being on the show today. It's always good talking to you. If somebody wanted to reach out to you or Mowinski Financial, or Mowinski Financial, how would they reach out to you? I think the easiest way, I mean, everyone's online right now. Just go to MowinskiFinancial.com, M-O-W-I-N-S-K-I, Financial.com. Um, call us, email us. We can. There's plenty of ways to contact us right through there, but we'd be happy to help. Yeah. Okay, great. So way. check these guys out. Uh, they're good. They'll take good care of you, and they'll find uh, find good results for you. And uh, thank you for watching. And as my mom always said, you can't and never could until you tried. So go out there and try something great, my friends, and don't take the easy way out. We'll see you next time. Give me-